Okay, Terry, and anyone else that's interested, what I'm talking about in this little video is about creating a uh, frame out for an applique design. So what a frame out is, is whenever we're working with machine embroidery appliques, we can program our hoop or the frame, which is what it's sometimes called, to move forward or sideways or various things so that we can perform various functions on our applique project. Those functions would include uh, placing our fabric down or our applique piece if it's a pre-cut piece, maybe trimming the fabric or that kind of thing. Uh, without having to take the ho entire hoop off of the machine, we can just try to finagle it so that we can keep the hoop on the machine as we're doing that trimming or placing, etc. So that's what a frame out position is all about. In our hatch digitizing program under the applique section. Um, it's always good when you're going to create some appliques when you're using this automatic function that you would come in here and you would look at some of the properties uh, that you are going to be able to adjust when you're creating your appliques. So this isn't really a video about making appliques. It's really more going to be about uh, how to change those frame out options should we want to and need to. So you can always see that you're going to have different styles. You can have a pre-cut where you're only going to get that placement line without a lot of extra tack down lines and um, things like that. Or you can do the trim and place, which is the method that I use typically because I don't have a cutting machine to cut my applique pieces. You can choose your tack down style and I usually prefer a single run. And actually my single run, I usually turn it into a two times a round run just for some stability. Our cover stitches, you're gonna have various choices there. We'll leave it as a blanket stitch. And if you wanted to, you could change the width and the spacing, et cetera, on those cover stitches. You can also change how the offsets work. And that is, do you want your lines right up on top of each other? That's what we get with the zeros. Or do you wanna have them offset a little bit? You've got those um, adjustments you can make as well. Now I read a little bit about the frame out function in the manual. And I didn't really quite understand how one was going to be different than the other. And the reason why I say that is because to me, every time that the machine stops after the color changes or when the color changes, um, I think to me, that means the same thing. The only difference that I think think might happen to be a change, a difference between the color change and the color stop is that if it's at the color change, maybe that is going to be the frame out will happen uh, right before you start the new color. All right, whereas the color stop will happen when this color ends and before it jumps to the starting point of the new design, maybe that's when you're going to get your frame out. So it could just be a simple matter of, let's just say, for example, I'm going to be stitching my yellow part, which I'm going to turn into an applique in a minute or two here, that once this yellow has finished stitching that applique, each section of that applique, if I have it set for the color stop, the frame out will happen immediately after that step is finished. Whereas if I had it set for the color change, maybe that frame out will happen not after the color has ended, but right before the next one starts. This is just me uh, brainstorming about this. I don't really know that what I've just said is actually valid or not. So take it with a grain of salt or experiment with it on your own. Let's say I wanna do it at the color stop just for fun, okay? The next thing we'll look at is over in the applique toolbox. Let's look at the frame out options. So mine is set for manual. So what the, I think the default here is going to be automatic. The reason why I don't know right now is because I've had this design open on my screen for a while and I've been experimenting a little bit to make this video. But if you have it set for automatic, the program itself is going to choose where that frame out is going to happen. And I'm not even really certain that it happens at the upper right or the upper left. All I know is that automatic means the program will fix it for you. If you wanna do it manually, a couple of different things are going to happen uh, and you're going to be able to choose where you want that frame out to actually go to. 
Placing under the cover stitches means that the frame will not move forward at all. It just means that um, it's just going to stay in the same position that it would be in normally, and you would have to take the hoop off of the machine in order to do your trimming and placing, etc. I always do that anyway, so for me, uh, the frame out issue is not such a big deal. But let's just play with the manual for a little while, okay? Let's turn this on. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this into an applique. So this is an EMB design. You cannot do this with a stitch file. It does have to be a native design file. So over in Convert to Applique, once I select this, I'm going to uh, just have you notice that down here in this blue bar at the bottom of the screen, this is our prompt bar. And whenever we're doing various functions in the program, we might get some instructions down in here about what the program wants us to do. So be watching there because I'm not going to be pointing to it as I do this because that just causes the whole uh, design to start jogging and jiggling around on the screen. All right, so let's start. Convert to Applicate. This is an automatic function, so what it's going to do is it's uh, going to allow me to choose where I want my applique to actually start stitching and stop stitching. Down on the bottom prompt bar, it's telling me to enter an entry point. So I'm working on this moon, and let's just say I want it to enter right here. Now the prompt bar is telling me to enter my exit point, and I'm going to have it exit at the same spot. The other thing I want you to notice is that when I started this process, this gray dotted box started to appear around my, my little crescent moon, and that is the, um, basically that's the stitch area for this little moon. And if I enter my frame out position, I could put it anywhere within my red boundary box here, which is my hoop. All right, but I want you to, to notice that if I put it way out here where I think that I might want my frame to actually move to, notice what happens. My design is no longer centered in my hoop. All right, and there is a reason why. I'm going to show you that in a minute. All right, so let's just undo for now. And this time, as I create my applique, I'm going to go through the same process again. My entry point and exit point are going to be somewhere here on this area of the satin line. This time for my frame out, I'm going to keep it within the gray box. My applique has been created. And you're going to see that my design has been, it is stayed centered in my hoop. What is the difference? The difference is what happens up here in our hoop setting. If I right click on hoop, we're going to see that I have my program set so that I am automatically centered. All right, so what that means then is when I placed my frame out to be way up here in the upper right hand corner of my embroidery hoop, that actually creates a stitch, so to speak. And that stitch, along with all these other objects here all got centered in the hoop and that is because I'm set at the automatic centering. All right, if I had my setting here set to manual where I could set the hoop setting uh, for the hoop center, uh, that may not actually have happened. So let's do a little change here, okay? For right now, I'm going to select manual. And if I check mark this set the hoop center, what I really want to do is I want to really make sure that I'm zoomed in here so that I can see where my hoop center is actually at. So I'm going to set the hoop center. I'll say okay. And I'll zoom in here. And there will be my hoop center. I think that's how that's going to work. So let's do this little star, all right? The star is selected. Let's convert it into an applique. Same thing happened here. Okay, everything right now is still centered in my hoop. I'm going to select my entry point. I'm going to do it right here. My exit point right here. This time I'm going to move my frame out position to the upper right-hand corner. Let's just see what happens. And I did that. My applique is now created and my design is still centered in my hoop, even though I put my frame out way at the upper right. So you see what happened there. Let's just go over it again, right clicking on the hoop function here because I set manually and I, for the hoop center, that's why the design still stayed centered in the hoop when I did that. 
All right, so let's take a little look now at what actually we have created with these frame outs. I'm going to select the uh, the moon, first of all, and I'm going to break it apart so that we can see the different sections of the moon. So we've got a placement line, we've got a frame out, we've got a tack down line, we've got a frame out, we've got a zigzag or something here, and another frame out, and then we have our final satin stitch. So let's look at this in slow motion. I'm going to zoom in here and we're going to do a little stitching under the player. Okay, so here we go. I want you to notice when it gets to the point where it goes to that frame out, what it looks like it actually is doing. Are we taking a stitch or is it just simply a fast jog? Look like a fast jog to me. Let's do that again. Here comes the Tack down line, fast jog over and back. So I don't see actually that I'm getting an, an actual stitch in there. All right, so let's just go ahead and end this. Um, so when you say that yours is, is actually looking like it's taking a stitch, I don't really have any reference for why that actually happened. I'm gonna run one more experiment on this. Let's do a bunch of undos. Till we get this all back to it being uh, the objects that I first brought in here. Let's go ahead and change our hoop. Let's just set, check it again. Instead of it being automatic centering, let's again set it for manual. And the hoops is centered. Let's say okay. Um, over in our digitize applique toolbar, this time instead of at the color stop, let's set it for the color change and let's just see if we see any difference. Okay. All right. Let's click off of that. Oops. Select an object. Let's convert it to applique. Uh, entry point. Again, we're just going to kind of duplicate what I did a while ago. Here's my entry. Here's my exit. This time I'm going to put my uh, frame out position up here at the upper right. Okay, so everything did stay centered in the hoop. What I want to do now is we will run a simulation on this again with the player. Let's watch and see what happens and see if it makes any bit of a difference. I really don't know what to expect since I didn't try this beforehand. Coming to the end. See how it changed the color there? Oh, that was the difference. Yeah, it went up as a red line and it came back as a green line. So this was done at the color change. Let's just keep looking at this as it continues to stitch out. So the color changed happened, and maybe that is the reason why we might have gotten some stitches up there, because it was tying in the new color, possibly. What do you think about that theory? I don't know. Kind of makes sense to me. Uh, okay. Anyway, the next thing I want to do quickly is go over into the old digitizing program, and mine was version 5 of MBX. And what I did over here is I created my own applique. I could have used the applique function, but I decided that what I wanted to experiment with was the old method that Maggie had taught uh, taught me to do a long time ago. And that is that I created a box just using the rectangle tool and I just duplicated it. So I have a placement line, a tack down line, and then I have a satin line. In between here is where I created my color stops. All right, so what I'm gonna do actually is I'm just going to delete these so that I can show you what I did. Creating a color stop or a frame out, excuse me, not a color stop. Said the wrong thing there. Turn on your digitize toolbar and let's digitize an open line. Okay, when we do that, we want to make sure we've got single run selected. And let's just say that we want our frame out to be in the upper right hand corner. All right, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to click with my mouse one time in that upper corner and I'm going to say enter. So this is it right here. It's the, it's the last thing that was just created. I'm going to turn it into a red color because I want it to be the same color as this part of the color stop. And I'm going to move it up. 
underneath the red. And what I'm going to do with it is I'm going to control D to duplicate it. And let's duplicate it. It's, and I'm going to turn it into black because black was my next color stop here. And I'm going to move it under the black one. All right, and I'm going to show you the difference. What we're going to do now is look at the parameters of this one. This is the first one. And when I look at the stitching on this object, it does have a tie in and it does have a tie off. This one here, I'm going to change the tie in, the tie off. I'm going to turn them off. Okay, and now what let's do is let's run the player on here and let's just see the difference in what we see in, in the way that this stitches out. Okay, it's going to jog over. Did you see how it made a couple little stitches there? Watch the difference. And if we need to reproduce this, I'll do it again. That probably wasn't a good example. Let's go to end. All right, what I want to do is I want you to notice something. So this is the one that we have tie-ins and tie-offs turned on. On this one here, we have them turned off. Okay, so let's watch that sequence once again, okay, under the player. And I want you to pay close attention to what's going on in this upper right-hand corner of the player screen. There we go. Notice the upper right hand corner. See that? It took a couple of stitches. Let's look at this one where we're not supposed to have any tie ins or tie offs. Boom, over and back. And not only that, but it has a different little uh, symbol up here, which basically shows that there is a stitch there, but nothing is more is happening than that. So let's go to the end. So anyway, that's the way that you can do a frame out in MBX, um, at least in version five. I don't know about previous versions. I suppose the same thing could probably happen. Um, and one of the reasons why I'm showing you here in MBX is because under the applique tool, we don't have that same ability um, under creating our appliques here to do anything about frame outs. All right, that seems to be a function that's unique to hatch two. And anyway, so that's one thing you're going to want to do is if you do use that manual function um, and maybe even, I don't know, you know, just depending on what other kinds of applique projects or digitizing projects, you might want to change this manual setting. At least in this instance, we needed to change that manual setting so our design stayed centered in the hoop, which to me is pretty important for placement on embroidery projects. Okay, that's all I've got to say about that for now. And I hope it's helpful. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.